Folks, today we're going to learn how to balance redox equations. Um, there are several methods that we can teach um, that will allow you to balance redox equations effectively. Uh, one is called the half reaction method, and a lot of textbooks use that. I don't particularly like that. Some teachers do, but I think it tends to be a bit more difficult and a lot more time consuming. Uh, the method I'm using here I've refined over, boy, over 20 years, and it's just a few simple steps, and following these steps you should be able to balance any and all redox equations. So I'm going to give you the rules, and then we're going to use those rules to balance, I don't know, we'll see how many we can get done, maybe a half dozen different redox equations, even some from your homework assignment. So um, you can compare these rules to your textbook. Um, the, the book we're using currently, pages 637 to 639, once again they use the half reaction method, and I'm going to teach something a bit differently. But if you prefer that method, please go ahead and use it. I'm not twisting your arm and making you do it my way. I'm just telling you that my way, for me, and the way I've learned it, seems to be the most effective and easiest way to do it. So step one, uh, determine the oxidation number of each element involved in the reaction. Now, if you just look up above, we did that a lot um, in the previous two videos. We learned how to assign oxidation numbers and determine what was oxidized, what was reduced, etc. And step one in balancing redox equations is to determine the oxidation number of each element involved in the reaction. And then step 1a, um, I balance those, at, those atoms that change oxidation numbers. And I would use a pencil. Uh, when I do this. I'll be using a pen because it shows up nicely on camera, but I would use a pencil when I would uh, do these because you end up doing erasing a lot of times and changing those numbers. Number two, determine how many electrons have been lost or gained, or and gained, excuse me, and then we have to balance those. Remember the law of conservation of matter. If you lose electrons, they can't just vanish from the universe. They have to be gained by something. And so the number lost have to equal the number gained. And then step three, we don't always have to do this, but if the uh, equation's in ionic form or net ionic form, you want to balance the ionic charge. Now to do this, if it says it's an acidic solution, or doesn't say what type of solution it's in, we'll assume it's acidic, we use H pluses or hydrogen ions to balance the charge. If it's in a basic solution, we use hydroxide ions. Step four, balance all hydrogen atoms in the equation using water. So sometimes you'll have to add H pluses or OH minuses to the reactant or product side, and sometimes you'll have to add water molecules to the reactant or product side to balance this. And then we have a little check. If you check your oxygen atoms when you think you're finished, and the oxygens balance, you're done. You can celebrate you've done a good job. If they don't balance, the best thing to do is to usually, well, start all over again. And I would just uh, erase it and begin from the beginning. It's sort of hard to, to, to fix a mistake midstream. Okay, so let's just jump right into this. Here is example number one from your notes. Um, let's go ahead and assign oxidation numbers to each atom to begin with. So uh, oxygen's two negative, and the manganese in this case would be seven positive. Uh, once again, if you don't know how to assign oxidation numbers, just check out the previous two videos, and we do a pretty thorough job of teaching that. Oxygen's two negative here, hydrogen's positive one, that makes that sulfur four positive. Manganese is two plus on this side, it says so. Uh, uh, here we have the hydrogen sulfate ion, oxygen's two negative, hydrogen's one plus. So let's see, we'd have six positives for my sulfurs. Oxygen's two negative, hydrogen is one plus. So step one's finished. Well, let's do step 1a. Let's balance the atoms whose oxidation number changed. Now that might not be necessary. Manganese went from 7 plus to 2 plus. I have one of each. They're already balanced. Sulfur went from 4 plus to 6 plus. I have one of each. They're already balanced. So step 1a, we can skip in this case because the atoms that changed oxidation number already balance. Step 2, balance electrons gained with electrons lost. This is my favorite step. I like to draw these lines. Manganese went from 7 plus to 2 plus. So it looks like five electrons were gained. 7 plus to 2 plus, five were gained. Sulfur went from 4 plus to 6 plus. So two electrons were lost. Now those numbers need to balance. So I need to find a multiple of 5 and 2, and I'm going to choose 10. So I'm going to 5 tuple the number of sulfur containing species. So I'll put a 5 here and a 5 there. So now I have five sulfurs, each losing two electrons for a total of 10 lost. 
and I need to double the number of manganese containing species. So I'll put a 2 here and a 2 there. So each manganese gains 5, but since there are two of them, a total of 10 are gained. So step 2 is finished. Electrons are balanced. Step 3, let's balance the ionic charge. Now it doesn't say whether this is acidic or basic, so we assume it's acidic. So we will balance the charge using protons. So uh, permanganates and ion, I have two of those for two negatives on this side. Um, sulfurous acid is not. On my product side, I have two manganese 2 pluses for 4 plus, five hydrogen sulfates, which are each one negative, so that's one negative. So the sum of the charge on this side is negative one. The charge does not balance. So I need to add a proton to this side, add one of them, and that will make the charge one negative on both sides. So I need to actually write in, I'm adding a proton to the reactant side, right there. And step three is done. The last step, let's balance all hydrogens using water. So I have 10 hydrogens here, plus one more that I added makes 11. I have five so far. Let's put a three in front of water. That gives me six more hydrogens for a total of 11 on both sides. Now, if I've done this correctly, the oxygen should balance. So check those. And if they do, we're going to celebrate because we did it correctly. So I have eight oxygens here, plus 15 more is 23. On this side, I have 20, plus three more is 23. Yay! They balance. So this is my balanced net ionic equation for that reaction. Okay? It seems pretty easy. They go probably pretty fast. Once you do about a half dozen of these, really, it becomes sort of kind of fun. Almost one of those things like Sudoku where you sort of want to solve a puzzle. It actually becomes um, somewhat fun. Okay, now let's take a look at example two. Uh, this one's in the molecular form, and we can balance those using the redox method as well. So let's go ahead and follow our uh, foolproof method. Step one, we'll assign oxidation numbers. Zero for bromine, it's in its elemental state. And I'm just going to pick on sulfur here, it's four plus. Trust me on that one. On this side, bromine is negative one, and sulfur is six plus. So I'm just picking out the atoms that I can see changed oxidation numbers quickly and just assigning those. Uh, 1A, hey, I have to do it this time because bromine changed oxidation numbers. I have two on this side and only one over here. So I've got to put a two there. So I have two bromines on both sides, one sulfur on both sides. So step one and 1A are finished. Step two, my favorite part. Let's go ahead and balance electrons gained with lost. 0 to negative 1. Each one gained 1, but there are two that did that. So I'm going to say two electrons were gained. And sulfur goes from 4 plus to 6 plus. Two electrons were lost. Well, that's nice. Two gained, two lost. Hey, electrons gained and lost do balanced. So I'm finished with step 2. Step three, we get to skip here because I don't have any ions in, on either side of the equation, so I don't need to balance the ionic charge. So step three is done. Step four, we're going to balance all hydrogens using water. So I have two hydrogens on that side. Two plus two is four. I have to add a water to the reactant side. So water participates in this reaction, so I'll add H2O on the left side. Now, let's check this. We'll see if all of our oxygens uh, balance, and if they do, we'll, we'll celebrate again. I have four oxygens on this side. I have three plus one more is four. Yay, we're celebrating. That equation is balanced. Okay? Now, you can go ahead and pause the video at any time and try these on your own, and then turn it back on and see how you did. Um, I would advise you to do that. So example three, I'm telling you this is an acidic solution. Um, which means we'll definitely be using protons to balance the ionic charge. So let's go ahead and assign oxidation numbers. Uh, chromine is 6 plus on this side. Iodine is 1 negative. Chromine is 3 plus on the other side. And iodine is in its elemental form, so it has an oxidation number of 0. Two chromines. So we can put a 2 here to balance the chromines. They changed oxidation numbers. Two iodines. I'll put a 2 there to balance the iodine. Iodines, they changed oxidation numbers also. So 1 and 1A are done. Then my chromines go from 6 plus to 3 plus. Each one gained 3. Two of them do that. So don't you agree that 6 were gained? Iodine. 
negative 1 to 0. Each iodine lost 1, but two of them did that, so two were lost. So I'm going to triple the number of iodine containing species. So I'll have 6 lost and 6 gained. This is where a pencil comes in handy. I'm going to change that to a 6, because I'm tripling that, and I'll put a 3 there. Now I have 6 iodines. Um, each one is losing 1 for a total of 6 lost. So step 2 is done. Next we'll balance the ionic charge. Dichromate is a 2 negative ion, and I have 6 iodide ions for a total of 8 negatives on the reactant side. On my product side, I have two chromium 3 pluses for a total of 6 plus, and iodine molecules are not charged. So I need to add a total of 14 H pluses to the reactant side, and that will give me 6 positives so that the ionic charge will balance. So I'm going to actually write in 14 H pluses there. Okay, now my ionic charge balances. My last step is to make sure I balance all of the hydrogens using water. So I have the 14 hydrogens that I just added there on the reactant side, and none so far on the product side. So I have to add 7 waters to my product side. Now, let's check our oxygens. We'll see if they balance. If they do, we get to celebrate again. 7 oxygens on my reactant side, and 7 on my product side. Yay, it balances. Is this fun or what? Okay, fourth example. Let's take a look at this. Um, we'll assign oxidation numbers quickly. Once again, I do this step sort of quickly. You guys should be fast at it now as well. Iodine on this side is 5 plus, and the sulfur is 2 negative. On the other side, iodine is 0, and the sulfur is 4 plus. There we go. Two iodines. So I need to put a 2 here. One sulfur, one sulfur. Okay, good. Step two, we go from 5 plus to 0, so each iodine gains 5, but two of them do that, so we're going to have 10 electrons that are gained, and sulfur goes from 2 negative to 4 plus, looks like 6 are lost. So, remember, do 6 and 10 have in common? Yeah, let's go with 30. So we're going to 5 tuple the number of sulfur containing species, put a 5 there, a 5 there, and we're going to triple the number of iodine containing species. So that becomes a 6, and that becomes a 3. Okay, so step 2 is done. Step 3, we have some ions, so let's balance the ionic charge. We have 6 iodate ions. Each one's 1 negative for 6 negative. H2S is not charged. I2 is not charged. We have 5 SO3 2 negatives, so we have 10 negatives on the product side. This is an acidic solution. So we're going to add 4 H pluses to that side, and that will give me 6 negatives on both sides. Okay, so let's write in plus 4 H pluses. And our final step is let's check all the hydrogens and balance those with water. 10 hydrogens here, only 4 over here, so I need to add 3 woo, H2Os to give me 6 more hydrogens, so I have 10 on both sides. Okay. Should we check our oxygens? Yeah, that's sort of fun to do. 6 times 18 oxygens on this side. We have 15 plus 3, 8. Hey, yay! The oxygens balance. We did a good job. Okay, let's take a look now at example 5. Hey, this one's a basic solution. So that's going to be a bit different in that we will use hydroxides to balance the ionic charge instead of hydrogen ions. So on this side, it looks like... Uh, the nitrogen is positive 1. The chlorine here is positive 1. On the other side, Cl is negative, and the nitrogen here is 3 positive. Okay, uh, let's see. Chlorine changed, 1 on each side. Nitro oh, 2 here. i got to put a 2 there to give me 2 nitrogens on both sides. Okay, step 1 and 1a are done. Okay, nitrogen goes from 1 plus all the way to 3 plus. So each one loses 2, but 2 of them do that. So I have a total of 4 that are lost. Chlorine goes from positive 1 to negative 1, so 2 are gained. Let's double the number of chlorine containing species. Okay, so electrons gained and lost equal. Let's balance the charge. 2 negatives on this side, 
two negatives on this side plus two more negatives. So I have four negatives on the right side. So we're going to add two hydroxides this time because it's a basic solution. So I'll write in two hydroxides. Last thing we need to do is balance all hydrogens with water. There's two hydrogens here, so I need to add one water to this side. And I should be done. So let's see. Uh, two oxygens plus one is three, plus two more is five. Four, hey, hey, we have five oxygens on each side. Let me do one more for you, just for fun. Uh, let's do another basic solution for you. Okay, so let's do CN negative and the permanganate ion reacts to form MnO2, manganese 4 oxide, and CnO negative. And like I said, we're going to make this guy basic. Okay, so let's see what we have here. 3 negative, that'll be 2 positive for my carbon, 7 positive for my manganese, 4 positive on the other side, and we're going to have uh, two negative, and then we have four positive for my carbon on the other side. Yeah, three, four, five, yeah. yeah. So here we go. Uh, manganese is our balanced and carbons are. So let's do electrons gain with loss. Carbon goes from two plus to four plus. Looks like two were lost. Manganese goes from seven plus to four plus. Looks like three were gained. Cool. We'll double the number of manganese species and we'll triple the number of carbon species. Okay, let's balance the ionic charge. Three negatives and two more negatives. Give me five negative on the reactant side. Not charged. Three negatives on the product side. So we're going to add two OH negatives so I can balance the charges. This is basic. And then we'll balance my hydrogens using water, so we'll add a water to that side. Check our oxygens. One oxygen plus eight is nine. Four plus three is seven plus two more is nine. Yay, it balances. So that's how you balance redox reactions, folks. Uh, we've done six for you. They're all pretty much the same. Just follow those simple steps I gave you, and you should be able to balance any and all redox reactions. Okay? Have fun with it. It actually is kind of fun. See you later. Bye-bye.